everyone. Welcome to week three. And one of the things that you're working on your first, after you read the chapters three and chapter four, and you're going to be introduced to creating new methods, you're going to think about program flow. And that's talking about reading code with multiple methods. So we need to know what a method is. And so a method is, the definition is it's a named sequence of statements that perform some useful function. So the reason you're doing a method is you want to make your code as efficient as possible. And as soon as you start seeing patterns or repetition in your code, then you know like, geez, I could make a method out of that. And then you can avoid some rep repetitive code and you can just call your method. So over here on the side is an example that they had in the book. And the first one is called public static void main. So this is your main, um, is the name of this one. And main is always the first method that executes. So even if it's not in the right order, I tend to write mine in the order of execution. But if you don't, which they did not do in the first exercise you're going to work on, it doesn't matter. You're going to look for the main and then you're going to see if other things are called. So this one has so a sequence of statements. And so we know statements in code are what's going to execute. And so we have this line has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven statements in it. And they all follow the um, using the parentheses and having the semicolon. So we have all the right syntax, which is important. And then we have this thing here called blank line. And so that it's calling blank line, which is another method. So we go down here and I named it blank line, which similar to the book, I just liked blank line better because you want to pick a name that makes sense so that when you look at it, it's, it's, it's logical. So I was like, well, I like blank line better than new line um, because there's going to be a blank line in between my words. But that's why you get to decide what you name things. And so this is the output that would happen if I ran this code. So it's going to print line. And so anytime we learned the difference between print and print line, so when it says print line, what's going to happen is it's going to print the word names, and then it's going to move my cursor down one to here. And then it's going to call the new method blank line. So it's going to pop down here and it's going to say system out print line, and it's just printing nothing in those quotation marks. So that means it's just going to go down, it's going to print nothing and go down here to this line. And then it's going to print line Jerry. So it's going to print Jerry. And because it's print line, I'm going to pop down here. Then it's going to run blank line, which is going to do another blank, um, put a blank line in there. So then I'm going to go down to here. And then my next line of code says, you know, system out print line Cali. So then I'm going to print Cali and it's print line. So it goes down here, another blank line. So I go here, down here, and then I'm going to print Amy out. And that's the end of my function. So I called this this new method, I called it three times, and then my main has um, those additional print lines in there, so that's why there's seven. All right, so now what you need to do for exercise 3.1 is you are supposed to think in your mind what's going to happen, and then you're going to type your output. So you have to walk yourself through this code, and I'm going to start you off at the beginning just so you see what it is you're supposed to do. So the first one is you need to identify all of them. So I'm like, okay, I have one method called zoop, one called main. I'm like, aha, main is the one I want to start with. Then I have one called baffle and one called ping. And you will see these are terrible names because they don't make any sense, but they're doing that so you can practice the skill of reading through the code. So over here in the blue is where I'm going to just imagine my output screen is going to be. So I'm going to start at main. And so the first line of the code says, System out print no comma I and notice they put the space in there with the before the quotation marks so that's why so it's going to print no comma space I and then a space and this one is print and not print line so that means my cursor staying right there so it's not going any further then I go down to my next line of code and it says zoop so now I know I'm going to pop and do a different code. So I tend to mark my code when I'm doing this. So I'm going to do a quick highlight on here because I want to know where I left off in my code. So I put a dot when I do it on paper. I'm highlighting because I'm on the screen here. So now I go up to Zoop. And the first thing Zoop says is it calls baffle. Man, so I get to call another method. So again, I'm going to go and I'm going to highlight this so that I don't lose my place. And then I'm going to go down to baffle. And so baffle here is going to, it's going to basically print out wug, and then it's going to call ping. Oh, and ping is just going to put a period at the end, and this is going to be a print statement. And so the period is print line, so that means it's going to put a period after the wug, and it's going to return to the next line. So I'm going to go through this. All right, so I go to, so baffle, so 
System out print WUG. All right, so it's in its print, not print line, so I know I'm not going to go, so I'm going to type the word WUG. And then I'm going to go down to ping. So I go from here down to ping. And this ends mine. I'm not going to have to go back to it. Do you see in these other print statements? I need to go back to them because I haven't finished going through Zoop yet. And so that's why I highlighted those. This one, it's going to go down to ping. This one's done, so I don't really need to highlight or do anything for this one. So I typed WUG, I go down to ping, and ping is basically putting a period in there. And because it's a print line, I have to go to the next line. That's where my cursor is going to be. So these two ones finished. So now I have to go back up because I was here in Baffle. So now I'm going to do system out print U Wugga. So, and this is print, not print line. So I'm going to type U Wugga. And then I have a space in here. So I hit space. And then I'll go to my next line of code, which is now going to call Baffle. So I'm going to do Baffle again. Here's an example of what the document could look like as you're walking through the code. So this is my reasoning on the left-hand side and the output. And again, you guys have to do the entire exercise. Um, and you don't have to do it with this exact level of detail, but this is sort of helps me understand when I do the coding. So first I started the main method, which would print no I, and there'd be a space after the I because there was an extra space before the closed parenthesis in the code. Then I'm going to, it's going to call the zoop method. And the first line in the zoop method calls the baffle method. So then the baffle method prints wug without a space. And since it is a print statement, not a print line statement, the cursor stays next to the G. So you can see that here. So we've added WUG because there was a space after the I. And so then the cursor would be right here after the G. The next line says so the next statement in the baffle method calls the ping method. And then the ping method prints a period and then returns the cur cursor to the next line. And that's because the ping method was print line instead of just print. And so now my output looks like no comma space, I space, wug, period. And that's how you're going to do the rest of this exercise.